at times of great difficulty, at times of distress, when it appeared that there was no hope left, what dua did the Prophet say when all hope of this world was cut off? It is mentioned in the Quran upon the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, But we know from the hadith that the Prophet Ibrahim used it before our Prophet Muhammad And Ibn Abbas narrated that when the Prophet Ibrahim was about to be thrown into that fire. What fire is this? This is the fire of Nimrud. This is the fire that for three days and three nights, it was made hotter and hotter. The fire that they wanted to punish Ibrahim with when they accused him of destroying their idols. And instead of responding back, he mocked them and said, no, no, must be the, the, the other idols who killed the biggest one. They must have been jealous of him. So this young boy Ibrahim, probably 14, 15 years old, this young boy Ibrahim alayhi salam, and we learn from the traditions he was the only Muslim on earth at the time. There was no other Muslim other than him at that time. And he believes in Allah and he rejects the idols. So when these evil people, when these mighty kings surround him, and they tell him, unless you apologize and come back to our way, we will kill you in this manner. And they torture him for three days. And then they make this fire. And before they throw him in, what does he say? Ibn Abbas said, when Ibrahim was about to be thrown into the fire, he said, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. This is the dua of Ibrahim. What does this dua mean? Why is it so powerful? When you say Hasbi Allah, you can only say Hasbi Allah when you know who is Allah. And then you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A heart that doesn't have iman. A heart that is ignorant of Allah cannot say Hasbi Allah. When you say Hasbi Allah, you are affirming the power of Allah, the love of Allah, the fact that Allah knows who you are, what you're doing, how much you need Him. When you say Hasbi Allah, you are saying, Oh Allah, I recognize that when you decide to do something, nobody can come between you and your will. There is no strength, there is no power other than you. When you say Hasbi Allah, you say, I don't care who is against me. If Allah is on my side, that's all that I need. So Hasbi Allah is something that is coming from the heart and it is affirming the power and the protection and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say Hasbi Allah, you automatically imply who needs anybody other than Allah. He who has Allah doesn't need anybody else. And he who has everything except for Allah has nothing. Imagine the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Imagine surrounded by a city, an army, the mightiest king alive is in front of him, threatening him, torturing him. He's a 15 year old kid. There's that fire that's been put for three days and three nights. Not a single human being in the world, his own father is on the side of the prosecution. Just imagine, not a single soul in the world to help him. Yet what does he know? Allah will protect me. Hasbi Allah. Oh Allah, you are in charge of taking care of these mighty armies. Oh Allah, I turn to you. You will deal with this fire. You will take charge of this whole world that has gathered against me. Hasbi Allah, I only need Allah. I don't need anybody else. So what happens when Ibrahim is thrown into that fire? The fire itself becomes a garden for him. A garden, a pleasant walk in the park. It becomes beautiful, fragrant, green, cool. This is what happens when you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is exactly what happened in the lives of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And also in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the battle of Ahzab took place and 10,000 strong were surrounding Medina and there were barely 1,500 sahaba. There's no way they could physically fight against 10,000. 10,000 armed men and they cut off the supplies. For one month they cut off the supplies. How long can you last? The people were beginning to eat vegetable, uh, the, the leaves of the, of the trees. They had nothing to eat. They're starving. They haven't had a proper meal for weeks. How long can the siege last? What is going to happen? They cannot fight. The Quraysh are outside with all of their allies, 10,000 strong. They cut off all of the food supplies, all of the caravans. How long can this go on? So they say, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. And what happens? What happens? An army from the heavens comes. And 10,000 strong are rerouted, fled helter-skelter. Overnight, 
because Allah Azza wa Jal sent, as He said, وَجُنُودًا لَمْ تَرَوْهَا He sent an army, you did not see it. The wind began to blow, the thunderstorm, a tornado in the middle of the desert, and the sand was so severe and hard that they all had to flee 10,000 strong. Can you imagine an army of 10,000 was destroyed without one sword being unsheathed? Think about that. Without one sword being unsheathed, 10,000 strong simply disappeared overnight. Why? Because hasbuna Allah wa ni'mal wakil, that is the power of when you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'll take care of an entire army and you don't even have to unsheathe your sword. But as long as you show that tawakkul, as long as you recognize, oh Allah, you will deal with it. You will take care of it. Hasbi Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. And of course, I have to add here as well that you only do this after you have done everything in your power. The Sahaba built the, the trench. The Sahaba armed themselves. The Sahaba were ready for battle if need be. They didn't just sit in their houses and say, Allah will take care. You do everything you can physically. And then you say, the rest is up to you, oh Allah. And really, oh Allah, I only need you. Hasbi Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out for you when you make this dua. That is Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. And Iman, Islam and Tawakkul, these three things are linked together. You always have to have Tawakkul on Allah. And this dua, it affirms the might and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When nobody is there to help you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. Trust Allah, He will definitely help you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped the prophets, the pious predecessors, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped those who asked Him. So, make dua to Him and He will definitely answer you. Allah will be always there for you, by your side, when nobody will be there with you. People may leave you alone. Your family may leave you alone. Even your spouse may leave you alone. Your children may leave you alone. The only one who will not leave is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, call Allah during your good days and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer you whenever you fall in trouble, whenever you are in hardship. And memorize this dua. This is the dua of the prophets. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Simple dua, but it has profound meaning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally helps you when you make this dua. Many prophets, when they were in problem, they made this dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a way out of for them. So, dear brothers and sisters, it's time we turn towards Allah. It's time we strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take action and do everything you can do in your position to solve your problem. And then trust Allah. Allah will definitely help you. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.